striped it. Hey, Lynn Matisse here, two-time winner on the PGA Tour. You're watching The Stripe Show with Travis Fulton. Hey everybody, welcome to the first ever Stripe Show. I'm your host, Travis Fulton, and we're here at Orange County National, the biggest driving range in the United States, and of course, right here in Orlando, Florida, the home of the Arnold Palmer Invitational presented by MasterCard. It's gonna be a big week here, celebrating the king and an absolute icon in the game of golf. But before we get to the Arnold Palmer Invitational, it's about the Stripe Show. This is gonna be a terrific show. We appreciate you viewing in. Let's get it started. Now, we're gonna kick off the Stripe Show each week with what's trending in the game of golf. And perhaps you might have heard Tiger Woods played last week at the Valspar, just down the road here, Interstate 4 in Tampa Bay, and he played rather well. But Tiger's not quite all the way back. He's getting close. He's definitely moving in the right direction, a T second, losing by one to Paul Casey. But you look at Tiger Woods, everything moving in the right direction, the full swing, the short game, the putting. I love what Chris Como did with Tiger's swing. Really, he looks much more instinctive. Of course, he's healthy, and he can hit all nine shots out there. A lot of fun to watch. But how about Paul Casey? That's my second takeaway from last week, getting his second win. It's been a long time, and Paul Casey struggled on the weekend. It seems like the bigger the moment, he'd get up towards the lead, and then from there, that putter would go cold. But not on Sunday. Paul Casey, 21 putts to get his second title on the PGA Tour. Congratulations to Paul Casey. And then finally, my third tech away is Rory McIlroy. Man, I'm a little bit concerned right now with Rory McIlroy. When I look at him with his putter, he looks a little bit in between right now and a bit confused about what he used to do with Dave Stockton and then what he's doing right now with Phil Kenyon. We got a cool pro breakdown coming up later on in the show and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on Rory McIlroy's putting. But before we get to that, it's time to get to our first viewer swing breakdown. This is something that we're gonna be doing every single week here on the Stripe Show. We're gonna look at your swings, we're gonna give you good information and we're gonna put it in the right order. And if you're watching right now, please send us any questions that you might have right now, because later on we're gonna get to the mailbag and we'll answer your questions. You can send them, you can tweet them to the at 18 birdies app or even at Travis Fulton. We'll get to those a little bit later on in the show. But first, let's get to our first viewer here on the Stripe Show with Travis Fulton. This is Larry from Marin County in California. Hi, I'm Larry from Marin County. Travis, what I'm trying to do is get more square onto the ball, and I tend to, to, to flatten out and lag behind the ball, and I really struggle to get the toe of the club around. I don't know if it's a swing plane thing or a, a release thing with my swing. Thank you. Okay, Larry, let's help with that club face here. Now, the first thing, when you're dealing with the club face, you gotta look at the grip, and that grip right there is definitely, I would say, on the weaker side. Both of those Vs are going up towards your chin. I'd make sure that when you look down, that left thumb is to the right-hand side of the grip, and that V is pointing a little more over here and also that right hand, that right hand's definitely too much on top, that V's pointing over there. We've gotta get that right hand a little more under and going that way, okay? Now that grip countered with, as you take it back to here halfway, if you were to look at the club face right here, that toe of the club should be slightly down, pointing towards, say, 11 o'clock. I think that club face is rotated too open there at 12 o'clock, maybe even one o'clock. Now. As you turn to the top, good left knee action off the ball. And then as you come down in the impact, what's happening here is your pivot's probably going to slow down a little bit to help square the club face up with the hands, right? You can't really be aggressive because you really need to use your hands coming through here to get that club face back around. 
because of the grip and the rotation of the face going back. So I feel pretty confident here that if we can fix the grip, if we can get the club face better prepared at the halfway point going back, you're not going to have to work as hard through impact to square it up. All right, Larry, thanks so much for sending in the swing. And I got to tell you, that was perfect. If you watch Larry's video, that's exactly how we want you to send it in. Send in your videos for future shows to the Stripe Show uh, at 18birdies.com, and we'll get to them. So let's get to Larry. He's got some club face control issues. He has a hard time getting the face back to square at impact. And I suggested that stronger grip, right? His right hand, you'll notice, was very much on top. And the more you get your, your hands going to the top, the more that face wants to rotate open going back and then it's harder. You got to work hard to get the face back to impact. So I want you to make sure, Larry, that your thumb is over here to the right. See about two knuckles and then more importantly, get that right hand more to the side and underneath. Don't get so on top. If you get more underneath and then from there you soften your right elbow a little bit, feel like your left arm's a little higher, that'll really help. So that's number one. The second thing here, I'm gonna go here to my target line camera, and what I want you to do, Larry, is when you take it halfway back like this, see that club face right there? That toe is down. When I look at it, that toe is about 10 o'clock, and what's happening is you're rotating that face like that, and that toe looks more 12 o'clock or maybe one, and you can see if I take that to impact, boy, it's just, that's a lot of face rotation to take on. So get that grip a little stronger to the right, get that club face looking like that, and you're not going to have to work nearly as hard to get that club face back to square. So one rehearsal, and then we go from there. And there it is. That one felt really good on the face, and you'll probably be able to be much more instinctive on your downswing and not have to work quite as hard in through impact there. So thanks so much, Larry. I hope that helps. We'll be looking for an update a little bit later on in the month. But now let's go to our second video, and this is Darcy coming from Oakland. All right, Darcy, let's take a look at the swing here. Lots of good stuff. I really like the swing shape going back and coming down. I notice you have the stick in the ground here on that yellow line, using that to probably help get the club started up a decent direction here. It's really good there, right on the toe line. Really like the position here and the position at the top. It's really good stuff with the wrists and the elbow alignments. As a result, the club face looks really good. Now, coming down, I think the club's in a reasonably good position right here. As you go to impact and you exit to the other side, lots of good stuff over here. So I really like your swing shape a lot. Now, the one thing that I would have you do is work on some rotation. And before you do that, I would make sure that at address your spine is tilted gently to your left okay just a slight tilt in the spine of the left so the head starts behind the ball and then what we can do from there is as you start down and through impact here we want to see more of the right hip at impact so i'm going to stop you right here at impact okay and i want to see more of that right hip starting to clear and get out of the way and when you do that, you'll get a little more air under that left heel. So we're going to make sure we have a little bit of side tilt, and then we can recruit aggressively through impact with the hips, and I think you're going to get a little more power at accuracy. Darcy, nice job with the swing. I love it. Good swing shape. We talk about swing shape, and the swing shape is how is that club moving in space. Really good here, really good up here. Lots of good stuff coming down. And I think now we're in a position here to work on the impact position. I suggested some rotation, but I'm going to add to that, Darcy, and I want to make sure that you have a little bit of side bend as well, because you sent me that email and you said you struggle from time to time getting out in front of it and topping the golf ball. So we're going to take our setup here. I want you to make sure, Darcy, I'm right handed, you're left. I'm going to do my best here, right? So stay with me. Make sure your spine is tilted slightly away from the target at address. Okay, so for a lefty, that's going to be slightly to your left. For me, that's going to be slightly to my right. Now, that's significant because when you come down in the impact, I want you to try to stay in that side bend, right? Notice where I am here. I'm still in my side bend to the right. I didn't let my spine go this way 
and kind of out to the left. That gets me too high and I can get over the top of the ball. So we're going to make sure that we keep our side bend like this. And then as you do that, a good drill is just to simulate impact. And if we go to this target line camera now, I want you to let that trail hip or that lead hip show up. See my left hip there, right? You were coming in and you were kind of in like this, right? So let your hips turn, let that, that lead hip kind of turn back this way and not come in this way like that. I like those hips turning like that with a little bit of side bend behind the ball and just do some little swings at first to get the sense of that. See there? Tilted, my hips turned out of the way, that club had hit down and that allows the ball to go up in the air. Good job, a little bit of impact work and I think we're gonna see the consistency start to improve. Great stuff, continue to send your swings in to the Stripe Show at 18birdies.com. But for right now, we're gonna to go to our next segment here. Come on over here. And our next segment is a little segment that we're gonna call 14 Strong. And what that means, we got 14 clubs in our back, right? And we wanna make each one of them a strength. Right now at home, some of you can hit your woods, but you can't hit your irons, right? Some of you are good with your wedge game, but you're not good with your fairway wood. Some of you can putt, some of you can't drive. We're gonna take one club every single week and we're gonna break it down for you and turn it a strength in your game. Let's get to 14 strong. This week, which club's it gonna be? All right, we're rolling. All right, it's time for our first ever 14 strong. We've got all these clubs in here, right? 14 of them. Which one am I gonna pick here this week? Well, I think it's only fitting, right? We gotta go with the driver because I know this club is an opportunity for so many of you at home. And the first thing that I want to talk about with the driver and breaking this down is really is how it's different than that of an iron. And you can see these two clubs, if I put them up, you know, naturally you can see the iron, of course, is shorter. Um, the club head by design is very different, smaller. It's got more loft on the face. And of course, this club is really built to hit down a little bit, right? We want that club head to kind of bump the ground, compress the golf ball, and that loft's gonna lift it up in the air. And when you look at the driver, the driver, very different. I'm gonna come in here closer here, and you can see that driver there, flatter sole, right? It's very big in the head design, and of course, it doesn't have as much loft. So this club is really designed to be swung a little bit flatter or maybe through the air where we don't wanna hit the ground with the driver. So how do we do that, right? Everything that we do with this club is designed to not hit the ground. So here's a good setup routine to follow at address. I'm gonna take my grip and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna set the driver behind that golf ball, about a half a ball you'll see. That, that golf ball is about a half a ball above the face. That's a good rule of thumb. Now from there with my feet together, I'm gonna take my lead foot and I'm gonna flare it out just a little bit and then take a big step with my right foot. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna step in, feet together. I'm gonna flare out that lead foot and then take a big step with my right foot and you'll see that ball position forward, left heel, kind of left shoulder area and that's where you wanna be. Now, a couple things once you get into this forward ball position. The first thing is, is make sure your hands are staying in line with that driver head. Don't get your hands going forward like this. This is not good with the driver. Iron, yeah, we want a little bit more forward shaft lean. With the driver, we want the hands to be a little bit more in line. So here we go. We're gonna step in, flare the foot, big step. Hands are in line. Watch my spine here. Little bit of side bend. And then the final thing, I'm just gonna make sure that my chest is looking back here a little bit. Okay, make sure with that forward ball position, you don't gravitate and face that forward ball position, but you get looking back here. So, I'm gonna try that one more time. And this is something, as you're watching this, you know, do this at home, right? Or in the office, go through this routine. And this is really how you master the driver setup. And it's so critical to get the driver setup correct because that's gonna allow us and set the stage to swing this club through the air. Little flare, big step, hands in line, tilted, and looking back here. So now I'm set up. Now, from here it's time to round this thing out a little bit. We want this club to be moving in very much kind of this merry-go-round fashion. 
in less of a Ferris wheel type of fashion, right? Kind of less up and down where we hit the ground and a little bit more around so we can attack it and maybe hit it slightly on the way up. Now, the sequence in doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn and face this way now, is I'm gonna make sure that once I get my setup here, I want this club head to kind of start a little bit out in front of me. Sometimes when you say around to people, they immediately start taking the club head way inside. And that's not what we want. We don't want this going in here. We want the club head to start out in front. See that club head there? It's out in front of my hands. So I want to start it out here and then let it round out, right? So it kind of goes out and around, not in and up. That's critical when you're hitting your driver and maximizing the shape and the power. Out and around, and then from there, we're in a nice position to swing the club head through the air, right? So I get my setup out and around and then through the air. That feels pretty darn good. Let's give that a shot here. Feet together, flare it. A little side bend. I'm back here. I'm going to start it out and around. And then I'm going to swing it through, keeping the club head off the ground. And there it is. You can see I took that right off the top of that tee, right? I didn't hit down on it. I came in and I swept it right off the top of that tee in the impact condition. And this is the final thing that I want to leave you with in this segment of 14 strong is that when I hit that golf ball, you maybe have noticed I was staying right there in my side bend to the right. Remember I said at address, you want to have a little side bend to the right? Well, when you hit that golf ball, you want to make sure you have that side bend to the right. And that really allows you for the club head to swing up more of a positive attack angle versus if I go the other way, then I get that downward attack angle. So here we go, putting it all together one more time. Got my driver, feet together, flaring it out, big step, I'll tilt, my hands are in line, not forward, out and around with some side bend to the right, stripe show, we're going to launch this one, J-Man, there it is, that one felt even better. All right, good stuff, I'm going to love that 14 strong segment. And uh, I hope that you're going to love it too, because we can break down each one of these clubs in our bag and send it to me. Go ahead and send me a tweet. Send us an email on what club you would like to learn a little bit more about and so we can make each one of your clubs a strength in your bag. All right, let's get back to another user, 18 birdies user question. Of course, the 18 birdies app. Uh, the fastest growing app in the game, piece of technology in the game. Download it today. And this one is coming from Wyatt Zangle, a lefty. It's lefties week here. Wyatt, how can we help you? All right, Wyatt, lots of good stuff here. I like the setup position. Uh, you've really got good swing shape both going back and coming down. You watch this club here, the camera angle is a little skewed, so it's gonna look just a little bit underneath the yellow line going back, but then watch this coming down. It's pretty much gonna come down that same line. See that club head there just tracing pretty much down that same exact line as it went going back. So I like to see that, and it really puts you in a position here where we can get a little more aggressive with your windup. And what I want you to do is as you take the club back, I want your hips to get a little bit more dynamic. Let this left hip draw a little bit more up this way. And as you do that, the lead arm, I think, can elevate a little bit. We can get that right arm and the hands a little bit higher at the top of the swing. So I think between the left hip climbing taller and the hands getting a little bit more upright at the top, uh, that's going to put you in a nice position for a little bit more speed and to take full benefit of what is good direction in your swing. Very consistent back and through on the same plane. Now when you finish, I'd make sure that you've got all that weight on that lead foot as well and that left foot is up onto the toe. So let's get to that. 
All right, Wyatt, good job with the swing. And again, another good swing shape. And what I mean by that, you know, the club's in a good spot here, pretty much on the toe line going back. As it comes down, it's pretty much on the toe line there, and then in that impact. And when you see good swing direction or good swing shape, then we can start getting a little bit more dynamic with the body. So here's what I want you to do. I've just got one of these alignment sticks. I'm gonna put it in the ground here next to my trail leg. Again, I'm a righty, right? So stay with me here on my right leg. This would be your left leg. And then take the club, put it across your shoulders like this. And then what I want you to do is when you turn, I want this trail hip to work a little bit more up and back this way, okay? Just like this. When you go back right now, there's not a whole lot moving down in here, right? So I want this trail leg to turn and start working a little bit more up and back. Let it stand up a little bit. Even if you lose a little flexion there in that trail knee, that's okay. When I do that, notice how my left knee starts to work down and my left shoulder starts to work down a little bit more like this. And I think that would be a good thing for you for your right hip, right shoulder to be a little bit taller than that of your lead shoulder, right? So again, if I went left-handed here just for a second, like this, right, it would look something like that. And just kind of stare, bear with me here a little bit because I'm not left-handed, but you can see how my left hip, left shoulder is taller than my right shoulder and my right hip, and then of course my right knee kicking in. So I like this here, kind of helps you frame it in so you can feel that hip kind of turning up on it like that and you can really feel that angle, the pitch of the shoulders and the hips working just like that. I like that for you. That's gonna help your lead arm get a little bit higher at the top of the swing. And then from there, as you swing through, just make sure that trail foot is getting up to the back or getting all the way up to the toe. So I hope that helps your swing. I think it's gonna add a little more accuracy, but I also think it's gonna give you a little bit more power. So thanks for sending that in. Let's go to our next one here. This one comes from Nick Chertok. All right, Nick, let's see if we can help that block hook combination that creeps in and that dreaded shank it sounds like from time to time. You do a nice job here in the first move. Lots of good stuff right here. Really like how you turn, arm structure, the club, uh, lots of good stuff to the top of the swing. Now, as you come down, I think there's two things that I'd like to pass along. Just as a general reference point, I'm gonna draw a line right there. And as you come down, you can see your hips are definitely gonna drive a little bit towards the ball, right? The belt buckle is gonna wanna go kind of in towards the ball as you go lateral. And the lead wrist is gonna be a little bit cupped or as we call it, extended. We get a little too much dish in that lead wrist. Now, what I'd like to see you do is that belt buckle work a little bit more kind of back. Feel like the belt buckle is gonna kind of push back a little bit more, gonna stay on that line. And the lead wrist, as you come down in transition, say right in here, we wanna get this lead wrist to work a little bit flatter or a little bit more flex. It's gonna feel like you're kind of bowing it out. And I wanna show you that here in a second. And that's gonna help keep the sweet spot kind of trailing behind you. It's gonna help the club face stay a little bit more on the square side. And that'll be a good combination with the belt buckle pushing back so you can turn and support that maybe slightly more closed club face coming down. Lots of good stuff. Let's get into it. So I'll start here. All right, Nick, Nick, thanks so much, sir. A lot of good stuff in your swing. And I talked about two things, right? The first was as you come down, maybe the belt buckle just riding in a little bit towards the ball. And then that lead wrist is too cupped, right? It gets too extended coming down. And when that happens, those two things, the club head wants to get outside a little bit, and then that'll move the heel a little bit closer, especially with your hips coming in. So what we want to do is when we start down, let the belt buckle kind of sit a little bit. Feel like the belt buckle kind of almost sinks back away from the ball and even a little bit away from the target, right? Don't let the belt buckle go towards the ball and towards the target, but let it kind of sit down back towards the heel a little bit. And as you do that, I want that lead hand to start to work more this way, more bowed, right? Or more flexed. And those two things will really position the club head, the sweet spot will trail a little bit more and things will line up a little bit easier at impact versus you coming down a little cupped, this coming in 
and then that hosel wants to be a bit exposed and that'll eliminate that ever so often shank that you told me about. So take your setup there, work on those two things in a pump drill, just bring it down, right? There I am at delivery. I felt my belt buckle sit down and that lead wrist really start to bow out. Look where that sweet spot is behind me. Give it a couple of those and then put it in motion. And there it is, feel really solid. I think the ball flight will come down and more importantly, you'll catch it more in the center of the face. All right, good stuff there. Keep sending in your swings. Email them to the Stripe Show at 18birdies.com. But now we're gonna go to our next segment here. And our next segment is gonna be something that we're gonna do each and every week. And it's gonna be the pro breakdown. And this week, we're gonna talk about Rory McIlroy. I talked about him at the start of the show. Rory McIlroy is having some troubles right now with the flat stick. What is going on? He's not instinctive and he looks a little bit caught in between two different styles. So here's my thoughts on Rory, Mac on Rory McElroy and the putter. All right, time for a pro breakdown. And this week, we're gonna talk about Rory McElroy. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, I'm a little concerned uh, right now with Rory McElroy and what we're seeing uh, with the putter. And when I look at Rory, I see a player who's caught in between right now with two different methodologies. And of course, when Rory was younger and winning the major championships, he was under the tutelage of Dave Stockton. And Dave Stockton's got a very particular way uh, that he likes to see the putting stroke work. And as of like the last two to three years, he's been working with Phil Kenyon. And, uh, and the two styles are very different. And we talk about swing changes and how difficult it can be to make swing changes. It's the same thing in putting, especially when you get into how drastic you know, some of these changes are. So let's break them down. We look at Dave Stockton and kind of what was Rory doing with him. You know, you look at that setup there and he takes his grip, the shaft, first thing you'll notice is that shaft is leaning, you know, really about five to six degrees forward. That shaft is going this way, the lead shoulder a little bit higher than the right shoulder. And with this setup, the putter had really working very much up and down the target line. I mean, it had a little bit of arc to it, but if you come in here and I set that putter head on that white stick, you would see that putter head kind of work up this way, and then most noticeably coming through, he would hold the face off like that, right? That face would be looking down that white stick all the way to post impact. And when you do that, of course, that lead side would be really built up. So Rory would really let that left arm come away, very braced, firm left wrist, and left hand, and that left hand really representing the club face, right? Getting that back of that left hand to return exactly the way it started, and then sustaining that all the way down the target line. So if I was to set up it here, left shoulder a little bit higher, got the shaft forward, and then I'm working kind of up and down and holding that face off, as you can see, pointing down the target line. You'll see the shoulders working in more of a rocking fashion. That's one way to putt. A lot of good players have putted that way. Rory putted that way and had some success. Now, you look at the changes now and that are happening under the tutelage of Phil Kenyon over the last couple years. What you're seeing now is the putter shaft is definitely more neutral and you're seeing the shoulders more level, right? So we got none of this going and none of this going, but the shaft neutral and the shoulders level. Now, with this setup, the putter head is working on a little bit more of an arc where you see the putter face now, as we kind of pan back in here, you'll see the putter face start to work a little bit this way. Now you'll see the face kind of open up relative to the white stick, back to impact, and then you'll see a little bit more of a closing effect on the other side. So that's a different path, that's a different face interaction with the target line, putter head working perhaps a little bit more on an arc. So we bring this ball in, we get set up here with the putter shaft neutral, we get the shoulders level, right? And now we let the putter head just work a little bit more on an arc and we get just a little more of an opening close effect with the putter face. I like that methodology. That's, that's one that I would probably gravitate more towards in my teachings, but both methodologies have worked. They've been successful point of this here is that you can't get caught in between. You can imagine Rory right now when he gets caught in between these two different styles, that ball is not starting 
on the target line. And right now I think Rory is in that gray area where he's kind of caught in between and he's the furthest thing from playing instinctive golf. So what I want you to do is decide which way you're gonna go. Are you gonna set up with the shaft more neutral, shoulder square, work it a little bit more on an arc, or are you gonna set up with the shaft forward, left shoulder up, and let the putter head work a little bit more up and down, where you're gonna hold the face off down the target line. Again, both of them work, but you gotta to commit to a style and stay with it and not get caught in between. And unfortunately, I think that's where Rory McIlroy is at right now. All right, so let's hope that Rory gets it figured out. He's too good of a player. He's gonna figure it out with the flat stick and get things moving in the right direction. But I do think that we're at a point that we've seen enough of it over a few years that I think it's probably time to go back to what he used to do with Dave Stockton. All right, enough with that. Now, it's time for some Q&A. Let's go to the social media wire. It's not the mailbag anymore, right? This is, this is the next century, so we're going to the social media wire and let me pull it up here and we've got a question here from Lonnie Ray how do I become a more consistent ball striker how much time do you have Lonnie oh my gosh that is such a loaded question but I'm gonna give you a couple things here so let's go ahead and pan out here a little bit the first thing is club face control you've got to have some face control at impact and your club face is primarily the lead hand so if you took your lead hand you put it out like this and you kind of turn the knuckles to the sky right that would be opening if you rolled it down to the ground that would be closing we want this lead hand to be closing and squaring up that face and we also want it that right wrist to stay bent right wrist bent right elbow bent as you come into impact and if i just did that in little swings went to impact felt my left hand rolling down like this my right wrist bent right elbow bent that's really good dynamic at impact to get the sense of. So I would start there. Now, the second thing I would do, Lonnie at impact, is I'd let some weight get into the lead foot, right? You can see how my weight's kind of over here into my lead foot, and then I would start to rotate, right? So I've got my hands right here controlling that club face. I've got my weight on my lead foot, right? And then I'm just starting to rotate. And then can I synchronize those things in small swings to post impact just like that? And if you can do that, then you can start to build it higher and higher. So I hope that I hope that helps kind of starting with some impact stuff and then growing from there. And I think my phone is buzzing here because we have another question, right? So a second question here comes from Travis Velichko and he says, how can I adjust my setup to promote a draw with my driver? Ah, okay. How can I adjust my setup to promote a draw with my driver. Well, the first thing you can do, you can add a little loft, right? I can add a little loft to the face, and I can also set it to the draw setting. That would be the first thing that you could do. Now, in addition to that, from a setup perspective, we could set up, and as I talked about earlier in the show, right, is to make sure that when we set up, we get our chest looking a little bit more back here to the right. I think one of the most common errors, Travis, with the driver is when the ball's forward, we face that forward ball position and we naturally get ourselves open way off to the left. So we're already swinging across our body. So what we need to do is get in here and maybe just feel a little closed, right? With the feet, get tilted and then turn your chest back here and that's gonna help the club come down more from the inside like this. And I also like that lead wrist, Travis, I've been talking about a little bit today. I like that lead wrist to be a little bit flatter at the top this way. Don't cuff it. That really gets that club face in a nice spot to come from the inside and hit that power draw. So I hope that helps. We got time for one more, J-Man? Oh, yeah. We got time for one more. My phone is buzzing today. Man, I feel feeling good. And this one is coming from Matt in San Francisco. Thanks for the question, Matt. And he wants to know how to get the club on a better plane going back. That's a good question and something that is really important to me. I work on the backswing quite often with players because by getting things in a better position going back, it makes it easier, of course, coming down. So here's a good checkpoint here. We're gonna do Matt. We're gonna set up here 
and I want you to take this club back slow like this. Look how, look how slow this is moving. All right, I'm going to do that again. Okay, and you see these sticks on the ground? That's the target line. All right, so I'm going to point that club head out towards that stick. And then when it gets to parallel right here, if I let go of it, it would be parallel to that white stick. All right, now, most common error, it gets to parallel. Look where it is. No good. Right? I'd rather have you a little out here than at all in here. Do it slow. Trace it back to parallel. There it is. And then from there, when you go up to the top, what I want you to do is I want you to try to kind of pinch the elbows a little bit and point the butt of the club out in front of you. See how the club's kind of laying down back here a bit, right? That's a good sequence. Start it out here, parallel, and then pinch those elbows a little bit to right there so that club is pointing out towards the extended target line. It's amazing that when you do that and you get the club prepared going back, how much easier it is to bring the club shaft coming down. Let's give that a try. Man, that feels good right there. I like the slow motion stuff. Yeah, there it is. A little bit of a pull, but again, that felt pretty good. We really appreciate the questions. We're going to be doing this each week on the Stripe Show, send in the questions, social media, send in your videos, and we'll get them to each and every week on Monday, 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern. But now it's time to go to our last 18 birdies user swing analysis. And this one's coming from J Man. Who's this coming from? Randall Coin. Randall Coin. Here we go. Hey Bradley, thanks for the video here. Let's check it out. A lot of good stuff. I'm going to do my best here with the camera angle uh, very low. can skew the look here just a touch, but I really like what you're doing at address, and I love this first move. Look at the club head. Really good stuff. Shaft right in line with the left arm. And then as you get to the top here, it looks like you might be kind of leaning towards the target just a bit with the spine. And then as you come down, this club, maybe just a, a shade high in between the forearms as you swing to a nice balanced position here. So a couple things here that, I, that I'd like for you to do. Number one is as you go to the top, what we're going to do is make sure that you're getting just a little more loaded into the right side at the top of the swing here. Okay, I want to make sure that spine's not leaning too much towards the target and encourage you to let the right hip kind of work a little bit more up where you lose some of that flexion in the right knee and I'll show you how to do that now from there I think that'll really put you in a position where this club shaft can shallow out nicely and kind of work back down in this area in here where right now that shaft I think is probably in between the forearms might be causing you a little bit of some issues from time to time. So a little backswing work, and I think that'll help the downswing plane. Let's get to it. All right, Bradley, hey, thanks so much for sending in your swing. A lot of good stuff going on there. A couple things from that video. I talked about loading up a little bit more to the right side. I didn't see your face on picture, but it looks like your spine might be kind of leaning a little too much to the left. Uh, you know, at the top of the swing like that, right? And what we want to do is we want to make sure we have just a little bit of side bend. And I think for you, make sure that your side bend is a little bit more to the right at the top. And that's relative for everybody. Some people have too much left bend at the top. Some people have too much right bend. But for you, it looks like you're kind of leaning left and it's very hard to load over here. So a little bit of side bend to the right. As you stay there and you turn, go ahead and let that right leg straighten up some. And you'll feel like you've got more pressure over here on the right heel and that's a good position I think for you to work from and looking at your downswing what I think we're going to see if we're over here like this and we're a little bit more loaded up on the right side it's going to be a lot easier for this club to shallow out and lay down on that right forearm just like that if you look that from the target line view and if that camera was a mirror you could see that you could see that club lay down and right there on the right forearm so I think a little bit of backswing work will really help that downswing coming down. Really appreciate you sending in your video and look for an update here in a few weeks. All right, that's enough for the viewer call-ins. We're gonna do that five times 
each and every show. And if we don't get to your swing, we're given each one of these contexts so you can relate to it as well as these are common errors that so many of us struggle with. Now, it's time for our final segment of the Stripe Show here on 18 Birdies. And what's the name of that segment again? 60 second swing fix. Can you believe that? They're putting me to the test at the end. So here we go. 60 second swing fix. J Man, you got it? It's on the clock. Here we go. Here we go. So swing fix, club face control is what we're talking about. First thing, make sure your left thumb is slightly to the right. Right hand covers up the left thumb. The second thing, and take it back, make sure the toe is just slightly down. See that here? Don't over rotate the club face like this. Make sure the toe is slightly down. And then at the top, when you hinge it like this, make sure that left hand is nice and flat with the right wrist bent, right? Now from here, you're in a great spot as the club comes down for that left hand to turn down into impact. See how I did that? A little swivel in the left hand. So quick recap, left thumb slightly over to the right, right hand covers it, club face slightly down. There's that lead wrist at the top and then we're gonna give it a little swivel to impact. We're nearing the finish line. 10 seconds. Woo. Way ahead of you guys here. Club Five, face. Four, three, there it is. Two. Dead straight. Club face control. Remember the club face absolutely dominates the club face and we gotta control it. We're gonna talk about the club face. We're gonna talk about the club head. We're gonna talk about the club shaft. We're gonna talk about all 14 clubs and we're gonna talk about your swings each and every week on the Stripe Show here at 18 Birdies. Thanks so much for viewing in. We made it through, it's the first show. We're gonna get better, you're gonna get better. We'll see you next week, Monday, 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern from Jacksonville Golf and Country Club. You've been watching the Stripe Show with Travis Fulton.